Vern Kyle here. In this video, I am shaping up this bubble. As you can see, there's no curb on it yet. So this is the uh, step uh, after stabilizing. The bubble's been watered and packed with a pad foot. And uh, I didn't actually place this gravel in here. Andre placed it in here with a skid steer. And I'm just coming in here to, to smooth it out and shape it up a little bit. It's a 20 mil road crush. And uh, this bubble has a crown in it. It has about a, a 300 crown in it, 300 millimeters. But these bubbles are not all like that. Sometimes they're actually flat. If there's a real, if there's a big high point in the back end, sometimes they will be flat across. But more usual, they do have a crown in them. And this one does have a, about, like about a 300 crown in it. Now, we, we call these bubbles, but what they are is just a, a circular turnaround. And they are designed in different sizes. This is actually quite a small one. It's probably only 25 meters in diameter. And in this one, I think that it looks like there's about uh, 10 or 12 residential lots around the perimeter of it. They're one of my favorite things to work on. And uh, right now I'm just focusing on uh, the outside perimeter of it, trying to get the outside perimeter more or less on grade and a bit uniform. And I'm probably also wheel packing the outside perimeter a little bit. Here, yeah, you gotta watch out for these valves. They're usually on the outside perimeter. There's a six inch valve alongside the hydrant. There's always a valve in front of the hydrant. And you can see how uh, when you're going forward on these bubbles, the turning action actually uh, always makes a few greater ruts. Like your driver wheels makes, usually make pretty good ruts as you're going along. You're going to pass by that six inch valve. And when you do that, you got to also be careful that your ripper doesn't hit those, doesn't hit the hydrant or the valve after you've passed it. You got to pay a little bit of attention to that when you're, when you're working on the outside perimeter of these bubbles. At least there is no string line on this one to worry about uh, yet anyway. Okay, now I've probably got that outside perimeter more or less the way I want it. I usually end up doing two blade widths around it. I usually go, you know, twice around the outside perimeter. And then I start focusing on, on uh, the center. You'll see how I do that. I'm collecting a little bit of material off the neck. You know, that's what we call the, the beginning of it out there. Just before you get into the bubble, we call it the neck of the bubble. Now I'm working on my second, second pass around. So you can see how the driver wheels, they, they always carve a bit of a rut in these bubbles. And that's why you need to use your back blade in them, is to get rid of that get rid of the the ruts that your driver wheels will make because you see you're always in a turning action as you're blading them and the tandems have a tendency the tandem wheels have a tendency to carve into the gravel when you're turning now i'm bringing a little more material out of the neck and into the i'm probably building up the the crown here a little more i probably noticed that the crown is a little low so I'm adding a little bit to that probably. And now I'm starting to use my back blade here a bit just to shape it up. Dragging material back. You see, you can pull a lot of material backwards. Especially if you lean your blade ahead a wee bit. And you notice how when you back blade it can just completely erase your driver wheel tracks. Mm -hmm. 
building up the crown a little more. Shaping the crown. After you get after you get used to backblading, you can actually do great with it. Like it's it's not only for smoothing it out. I mean, it works great for uh, for smoothing your tracks out. But once you get used to it, you can actually do grade backwards. You can actually adjust the grade very accurately in reverse. I'm just uh, shaping it, putting a crown into it a bit here again. We'll eventually measure this up. Well, they got to, oh, they got to put the string line on this, and uh, don't forget, we got, like I say, we got to put the uh, the curb has got to go on this bubble yet. So the string line will have to come. Well, we'll grade the perimeter of it, and then we'll put the string line on it. You see, behind me is just stabilized material, just clay, stabilized clay behind me there. And you can see trucks are dumping behind the grader there on the on the street. And Rob is just dumping them in a row so that I don't have to tend to every dump. He's just dumping them in a continuous row all the way down the street. That gives me a little bit of time to uh, to play with his bubble a bit so I don't have to tend to each truck dump. Here we are just shaping her up a little bit more. And as I do this, it'll be packing a little bit. My wheels will be packing the gravel a little bit more. Yeah, like I say, I usually, I usually go twice around, twice around the perimeter, forward, and then, uh, then I start to backblade. And here I am starting to backblade. And by doing this, it'll shape it, but it'll, it'll also just completely erase my the ruts that, that the grader has made by the turning action. And then I'll also be, uh, be just shaping it. And as you do this, you'd have to be careful of this valve and this hydrant. You'd have to keep that in mind. Sometimes there's a CC back there too, but this one doesn't have a CC. Sometimes they'll put that there back there as well. And uh, just shape it up. And your, your back blade pretty much takes the uh, takes the tracks out of it. And now I'll keep my articulation going, and I'll come around, and I'll more or less screw myself to the center in in a way. Come around, and now I'm I'll, I'm out I'm out a little ways from the perimeter now, and I'm probably fully articulated now. And this is exactly, if I was completely, I'm not really finishing this bubble because the curbs aren't even on it yet, but when I'm finishing it, this is basically what I'll do as well. I'll do the same kind of action. And now I steer out. I make two loops, and now I steer out, erasing my tracks. And now the crown will roughly be in there because I've been working on the crown as I've been blading this. So now the crown will be, it'll be roughly there. It's about, it's about, usually these bubbles end up being about 3% slope from the outside perimeter to the crown. Usually about 3%. Now I blade there. Now I lean my blade ahead a little bit and drag this backwards. And I'm not only smooth, not only grooming up my tracks, I'm also adjusting the grade of the crown here. And groom it up back into the neck of the bubble. I'll come ahead and do the other side the same way. I'm going to stroke that uh, center there again, I guess. Sometimes I use different actions depending on what it needs, you see. I'll back up and I know there's a little bit of a windrow there and I'll, I'm hooking onto that windrow and dragging it back, you see. And as I do, I'm, I'm lifting on this side of the blade a little bit and shaping the crown. I'll always keep that in mind as I do it. And when you're doing this, always make sure there's nobody behind you. You know, sometimes you can get so focused on your on your backblading that you forget to uh, pay attention to what's behind you. You got to really remember that. Here I am backblading the crown, 
I'm probably lifting up a little bit there just to leave a little bit at the crown. Back into the neck. Like I say, I really enjoy working on these bubbles actually. They're, they're a pleasurable thing to do. They're actually fun to do. There, now that bubble will be at least, uh, you know, roughed in. It'll be rough. It'll be roughly on grade. And like I say, we gotta put string line on it and put the curb on it yet anyway. But there, there's basically how I, how I would shape up a bubble. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, would you please subscribe and like? And we will see you next time.